Yo, hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to guide you through the process, requirements, tips, beads, and everything that we have followed in order to include the new passenger seat feature to your mod. Important to understand that this feature will be only available for the players who own and activate the DLC in their current save game. Now, to include the passenger seat feature to your mod, you are going to need the latest version of the game, 1.6 or above, the Kubota DLC, the Giant Editor 9.0.2 or above, if it is one, and optional, you can use the assets that we have shared in the description below that will make your life way easier when trying to do that. Now, what does your mod is going to need? What is the mod going to need? to be ready and what's mandatory in your mod in order to recognize that there is a new passenger. The vehicle type used in your mod must include the specialization enterable and IK chains if you plan on going fancy. The new code and options are included in that specialization inside the vehicle XML. A passenger is no different than a main driver, and it will have the same components as shown in the picture right now. Those are simple. We're going to have a main seat, an entry point, an exit point, a camera for the first person view of the passenger, a player skin, left, right feet, and left and right hands. First, we're going to do the visual part of adding a passenger, and with the key elements explained now we must add it in a way that the game will recognize and read it. We are going to use the TLX 2020 as an example, so we first going to open the mod in our Giants editor. And since I'm going to use the preset that I've mentioned before, that you can again find linked in the description below, I will drag and drop the i3D inside the TLX 2020 mod and it will show the markers, these red arrows, that position, player, legs, hands, with every single one of the arrows. It is important to remark that my asset include extra parts that can be necessary depending on your case. In this scenario, we will remove them, leaving only passenger seat 01 below the main node, passenger seats. Now we must position the arrows properly. Considering that the player skin arrow marks the lower part of your uh, upper body, the piece of your body that you use to sit on the couch on your chair, your rear end, the rear end of the passenger, well, you know that. The foot markers indicate the heel of each foot, and the hand markers indicate the center of the hand. Special mention to the camera rotation. There are values that cannot be altered or set differently. Make sure that your camera does not include any rotation on the Z-axis. Use the X-axis to make the camera look down a bit. Minus 10 degrees is a good value, is the one that I use. And please keep the Y rotation at 180. Don't worry, it's really hard to imagine the player just based on these arrows but we will need to check it in-game to adjust it properly. That will be the last step. Before that, we need the most fun of it. We need to code it. We need to go to the XML and tell the game, tell our vehicle that there is a passenger and that it's going to behave in a way. Let's jump into that. With the physics elements inside the I3D, as I said, it's time to code inside the XML a new passenger. We're going to need new i3D mappings for the newly added components and we're going to add a new section or use an existing enterable section to put inside our passengers. The first element was to generate the i3D mappings and you can either do it manually or you can use a tool. The i3D mapping exporter tool that will generate easy i3D mappings for you. Of course, you can find a link to that tool in the description below. With the i3D mapping generated, we go to the XML and we are going to include them in the i3D mapping section. 
usually found at the end of the XML. This first section is going to give names, valid and readable names to the XML to recognize where this element is found inside the R3D. We must locate now the enterable section inside the XML and we will paste the code that you can also find inside the asset that I have created for this tutorial. Like mentioned before, the link is also included in the description and the name of the file that you need is passengerseatscript.xml. We're going to open the file and you're going to select everything inside and press Ctrl C or copy. We're going to go back to our vehicle XML and let's going to position yourself again into that and go to the enterable section that you see right now in the screen and paste the new code as you see it. Special mention, this example will work only if you use my notes, my assets and my code. If you're using different names, if you are adding more passengers, 0, 02, 0, 03, whatever, Keep in mind that you need to rename all those. Now we have the physics part, we have the logic part of the code, it's time to test the mod. But we are on a slightly different scenario when trying to test this new feature because it will not work in a single player session. We must create a multiplayer session with your mod properly zipped and active and then we can purchase our vehicle and test the position of the passenger. In order to do that, you first need to get inside the vehicle, entering the vehicle as usual, and then use the key combination Control G if you're on PC, or left bumper, right bumper, D-pad down on consoles to switch to the passenger position. This is the first time that you are checking your passenger in the game. It's normal that you see the arrows. So, when you see that the passenger does not adjust to the seat that you wanted that his hands or her hands are not in the right place please please we are going to adjust it but I recommend not to close the game yet pay attention to where the arrows are versus the hands or versus the right position that you want them to. now we move to the i3d of the vehicle in this case I have my TLX 2020 and you should still have it open and based on how the character looks in the game, we are going to drag, we are going to adjust, but not the arrow. Not the arrow, but the node, the transform on top of the arrow. If you move the arrow, nothing's gonna happen. The arrow is just a pointer. When you are happy, then remember you must close the game, save the changes on the i3D, compress or zip the mod again, load the game again, create the multiplayer session and on and on and repeat until you are happy. Please don't forget to remove the arrows or hide them uh, be before you go play. We are going to leave it here for today. Thanks for your attention, support and remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet and if you do so, please remember to activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos, tutorials and of course our live streams. With all that, and as usual, be nice, be nice, and see you around in the channel. Bye!